oh, more updates on that fourth Star Trek movie. <laughs> like, that's happening. Hello, everyone. I am Mecha Random 42 I am still the one, still the only, still the original, still your favorite YouTube consumer advocate, Harpy. And I know probably everybody's left already because we were rapping. And then you guys reminded me, there's Star Trek stuff to talk about. As if Star Trek wasn't laughable enough as it is. Well, the ha-has that we have to talk about today are <laughs> the meanering and the, and the rubbing in the faces of everybody who likes to likes to call people a bunch of fake fake news and rumor sites even though i'm just somebody who reacts in an entertaining manner to things i find on the internet and if i'm telling you about something it's usually because you guys have said it first so yeah i, I love that i love that basically this is a roundabout way of saying calling me out for repeating back the rumor you made up is a really crappy thing to do and we don't like that and don't appreciate that in any way shape or form but we're not talking about this site. We're talking about the people who actually write the rumors. A lot of the people, and not all of them, just, there's just one or two in particular. So if anybody gets mad at me for repeating them back, then maybe they should go back to the channel who admitted to making up rumors just to troll people into making a video about it. That really doesn't sound very smart, does it? You know, if you're going to make up some rumors and then spread them out there just to call people out for making videos on it, right? And and they've done that. And, then, and this channel has called out people like, you know, Doomcock for reciting back rumors, you know, and also Hail Doomcock. And, and they've called out people like me for, you know, quoting them and saying, gee, what I've heard is this. And it's kind of a funny thing that they would do that, but... We have, we have something right from the director's mouth here. We have something that might clear up some of these, some of these rumors and misconceptions, especially about the fourth Star Trek movie. Noah Hawley provides updates on his stalled Star Trek movie. Now, Noah Hawley, if you guys don't remember, he is supposed to be doing, or he was the supposed most recent director attached to the fourth installment of the J.J. Abrams Star Trek films. And we've heard rumors of Quentin Tarantino being attached at one point to a Star Trek film. Probably not this one specifically. There was a female director that I can't remember the name of. The Midnight's Edge guys really, really dissected all of the fourth Star Trek film. So I definitely want to recommend them for all the history of this. If there's not enough for you in the... I mean, they, they, these guys abounding into comics, they do a pretty good job on their articles. So they're probably not going to exclude anything, but... Just in case there's something that might be missing, I would recommend the Midnight's Edge videos. I'm blabbing too much. Go ahead and cancel me for blabbing. Fargo showrunner Noah Hawley recently provided an update on his stalled Star Trek film while promoting the season finale for the film or for the show Fargo. I'm adding words that aren't there. Back in September, it was reported that Hawley claimed that his Star Trek film wasn't dead. He also provided details on what it would entail. Variety's Daniel Holloway reported that Hol Holly, I can't pronounce his name, told him, especially after Holloway and Holly, they're so similar, told him his Star Trek treatment is still alive, just in stasis. This was despite reports that Emma Watts had put the brakes on the project back, to, back in August. Emma Watts, if you guys don't know who that is, she's the new executive who came in and said, hey, we have to reevaluate and really take a hard look at all of our current Star Trek properties, including the films and the television, and stop all the stuff that is just going to lose us money, right? So that was one of the things. So she didn't really say stop all the stuff. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm inserting. I'm, I'm interpreting for you. You know, much like a tarot card reader might. Variety's Dave McNary reported in August, Paramount Pictures has decided to pause on making another Star Trek movie nine months after hiring Fargo and the Legion creator Noah Hawley to write and direct the next installment of the franchise. Sources indicate that Watts has put the brakes on the Hawley project in order to get more clarity on to handle the next Star Trek movie, but added the project has not been ditched. Well, it's not so much sources. This was actually an article that came out, I believe, on Deadline or Variety where they do, do say that Emma Watts was coming in to reevaluate. And there, there's a word I'm forgetting here. I'm going to try and pull up that article and I'll just insert it in post here. So she is coming in and reevaluating the franchise. She is coming in to 
fix and see where where what needs to be fixed who needs to be held responsible who we keep who we let go what works what doesn't work that is i believe her job now correct me if i'm wrong on that one as what the film was about holly provided some detail about his script in september he stated we're not doing kirk and we're not doing picard it's a start from scratch it's a start from scratch that then allows us to do with do what we did with fargo where for the first three hours you go, oh, it really has nothing to do with this movie. And then you find the money. So you reward the audience with the thing that they love. But that's kind of what, that's kind of what all of the Star Trek did anyway. Like after what, the, towards the end of the season of season one, you finally see the Enterprise. And then season two, they bring in Spock. Not that they really should have and not that anybody actually likes what they did to Spock. I like science. No, that's just Spock. He had previously detailed he wanted to get back to Star Trek's roots as well. In January, he explained, going back to what I loved about the series, The Next Generation, when a lot of franchises focus on, focus on might makes right. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Star Trek is about exploration and humanity and at its best and diversity and creative problem solving. Well, this sounds, this sounds like a bunch of buzz. That's what Star Trek always was about. Now they're trying to hitch themselves onto this whole diversity initiative, this, this diversity narrative where they're really just using, using people for tokenism and they don't actually understand how to showcase it in the Star Trek sort of manner. However, it now appears that Holly's Star Trek film might be officially dead in the water. Talking to Deadline, Holly stated, it doesn't appear to be in my immediate future. Well, that's kind of like the Ryan Johnson Star Wars trilogy or anytime you hear, or the, the second and third Han Solo movie, you know, the Solo a Star Wars movie. You have them in the works, but then they kind of just get pushed off and pushed off and then you just lose track. You'd move on to the next thing and then you never end up making it. And I think I'm okay with that. I don't think we need... I don't really think we need any any new Star Trek films because they aren't giving us good Star Trek anyway. They're giving us this sort of lowest common denominator Star Trek that is trying too hard to be Star Wars. He went on to elaborate. I think when Emma came in, she took a look at the franchise and wanted to go in a different direction with it. Holly then stated, but you know, life is long. We were very close to production, but in this business, that doesn't mean much. You got to get out of the gate to be in the race, if you know what I mean. So that just means that they were like in talks, they were in pre-plan. This is, this is the same thing whenever they announce all these new Star Trek shows, like the Section 31 show that's never going to happen or the, 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 well, I think the Pike series has probably the best chance of happening, but still who wants it? Who needs it? Nobody needs it. Coming to CBS All Access from the makers of Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Picard. Fucking hubris. And short tracks. <laughs> Comes a new series that's more of the same old, same old. Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Coming to CBS All Access, if it still exists. one this just sounds to me like they got almost there and they said nope we're not gonna lose any more money on this and he could have lied and said oh yes we're gonna bring every time every time i see these every time i see these star trek articles or and and most of the time it's about discovery it's uh, it's something like a quote from akiva goldsman oh yes we're bringing star trek into a more positive light it's going to be a hopeful optimistic future and then what happens it's crap they have to break the whole universe everybody like earth is a bunch of xenophobe racists the vulcans are racist everybody is just as horrible and nasty as the people creating the series in you know that's that's the way it seems anyway or how they feel that the rest of the world is they don't have this hopeful optimistic outlook on the future they don't actually understand what Star Trek is. And every time they say that, I feel like they're just blowing smoke up my backside. And I don't like that. <laughs> At least not con not when it's not consensual, I suppose. I can't, I can't be excited for this. A rumor from 4chan in February has indicated that Holly's Star Trek film had been rejected with reason being deemed too Trekky. Yeah, about, about focusing on, you know, the, the social, the social not social political, but more sociological 
sort of sort of dilemmas and debates and that sort of thing. It probably would be to Star Trek and that type of thing that type of thing doesn't make money. It's a niche of a niche. It can only make a certain p- amount of money, right? Robert Meyer Burnett and the Midnight's Edge guys, they've all broken down, you know, you really can only spend so much money on a Star Trek movie and you can only expect a certain amount in return. These aren't billion dollar Avengers franchises right? It is a niche of a niche. The Avengers can appeal to a lot more people because let's face it, you can, you know, you can fudge a lot of the science. You don't have to explain away a lot of the stuff with Star Trek. You get Star Trek fans like me coming in to question absolutely everything. Well, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you use this? How are you transporting somebody when you have no idea how far away you are? And you can't explain it. You're just transporting somebody halfway across the galaxy. Now that's not how that works. If that worked that way, why would you have a starship? It's too thinky for a lot of a lot of people nowadays. And there's nothing wrong with just having mindless entertainment. As a shout out to my friend Jesse Milestone, I just that that's the name of her channel, actually. Go go check her channel out too if you like, you know, smart people talking about smart things. She talks a lot about like the Star Wars stuff too, and she's really fun. The, the point is, there's nothing wrong with having something just for fun. And I'm not saying her channel is either. It's just I realized what I said the second after that. So, no, there's nothing wrong with having a popcorn movie like an Avengers thing. There's nothing wrong with not explaining away the science in that sort of setting if you're trying to have, like, the Avengers. If you're making the Avengers, right? If you tell me that the Hulk is made from gamma radiation, I know in my head how gamma radiation is going to turn your internal organs into liquid shit to quote George Carlin, but you're, you're not, you're, it's, it's, it's a fantasy. It's, it's not nearly something I treat as the same sort of level of entertainment as Star Trek. And I'm not saying one's better than the other at all. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm just saying I'd expect different things from a Marvel movie as I do Star Trek. And if you're going to slap the label Star Trek on the side of it, you better make sure you have it up to par. And that's what modern day Star Trek has not been at all. It has tried too hard to be the next Marvel movie, the next Star Wars, the next billion dollar franchise. They're just not going to be that. They're a niche of a niche. And there's nothing wrong. Like, I can take lesser visual effects if that means the budget's going to be cut in half. I can take people lighting themselves with their own flashlights on their guns in the back of a puddle jumper on Stargate Atlantis on something that looks like a cardboard tube. It's better than that. I can take that as a story because there's a reason for it and you don't need all this elaborate CGI and the stories were written and it was entertaining. That's what Star Trek isn't anymore. It's not even entertaining. So there's just, there's just too many opportunities for modern day Star Trek to stop and say, wait a minute, what about this? Wait a minute, what about that? Also, here's the 4chan rumor. These are the rumors I was talking about how some, some people who are super jealous of like fandom menace sort of YouTubers make up rumors just to yell at you for for reporting back on and talking about. Now, I'm not a news channel, obviously, but I'll talk about the rumors. The rumor also detailed Paramount officials were reportedly enraged. It shared a lot of similarities with the Orville, which they see as inferior to the competitor and nonetheless eating up their market share. Well, that's because the Orville is a more superior show. It's fun. It's intelligently written. It takes sociological issues and puts a puts a sci-fi spin on them so that you can have that little debate in your head or with your friends about what would you do in this situation you know they give you a rock and a hard place sort of situation and they find a compromise and that's what star trek should be doing and they're not what do you make of holly's admission that this star trek film isn't happening I'm fine with it. I'm I'm really fine with it. I don't I don't know if I trust that he would even make something that was up to par with even the Orville. And I already have the fix that I need for Star. Right now, I'm just watching Star Trek right now on my channel to review it. Just to one troll the people who it really really upsets. Because let's face it, they always want to gatekeep you away. The fandom of these these modern day Star Trek shows. What it, what is there the, the 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 toxic ones? You know the the SJWs who just decide you're an istrophobe if you don't like Michael Burnham, even though she's a crap character, or if you point out that how the how the producers are ableist because they didn't even give their wheelchair characters names or a reason to or an ability to get on or off their ship. Kibber! They're just there as a carbon cutout so you can see yourself on screen. 
not that you even deserve to have a name according to them or have a personality or a position on the show. Ugh, justice for Timmy. That's all I got to say. We had to name him after probably one of the most amazing characters that were about representation. But that's this whole fan base of people who, who want to, like the modern day, the newer fans, the people who come to a fandom to complain that there is something wrong with it. Like, oh, I'm, I'm such a huge Star Trek fan, but now we got to fix this, this, and this, and you're an istinophobe, and if you don't like it, you can go. I've been here for 40 years. Where have you been, bitch? Like, seriously, you're trying to gatekeep me out. You're trying to take away my house, take the keys to the castle, shove me out the back door or the front door. Don't let the gate hit you on the butt on the way out, and you're gatekeeping us away is what they're doing. And they don't even realize that. They call us gatekeepers. <laughs> Jonathan Aldridge, five pounds super chat. Thank you so much. Star Trek was an adventure on a spaceship whose crew members were different and unique as individuals that became better people. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and they kind of forget that. We don't even have characters that have names on the show that I can remember. We're three, season in, three seasons in. Not a one of these side characters had an episode of their own. No, because the show is all about the main character and the main character is terrible. And, and they always yell at people, like the people who love the show, the, the fan or the bots who are paid to love the show, right? The troll accounts, the marketing accounts. They like to decide you're an ist because you don't like it because all they see is the ethnicity of the characters. They only see the color of people's skin. They don't see, they don't see these characters as anything other than, like, like I see, what do I see when I see this character? I see this character as this is the character who started a mutiny. This is the character who, that's, that's the character whose parents worked for Section 31 and this character was raised by Vulcans on Vulcan. This is the character who is, because Scripps said so, is now the adopted sister of Spock. And because Scripps said so is now the reason Spock became the person he is. Because she told him to. And what do they see? They see a character of African-American descent. That's all they see. No, they see an actress of that. They don't see a character who assaulted her captain and, and mutineered. They don't see, they don't see somebody who, ha, who, who cost thousands and thousands of lives in the Federation. They don't see somebody who is constantly insubordinate and dressing down her superiors, even dresses down herself when she's in trouble on the show. They only see the color of this person's skin. And that is so disgusting to me that these are the modern day Star Trek fans that are destroying it for the rest of us. And I cannot imagine going through life and only seeing that, especially if you're watching Star Trek, only seeing the character for the color of their skin. Being like they have anything to do with modern day Earth culture. The woman was raised on Vulcan for crying out loud. The woman was raised on other planets. And the fact that that's all they see is so disgusting to me that we are there as a society that they can only see this character, this actress. And she's a lovely actress. She's a lovely woman. She seems very bright and intelligent. That they only see the superficial. And that, that's just, that just really, really, really is annoying. That is my thoughts on this Star Trek. And I've ranted a bit more than I should have. But thank you guys so much for watching this. I am going back to my live chat. Don't you go anywhere. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye. And it's quite different from Next Generation. You wouldn't go back to him as he was. So he would have to be different for you to go back to him. Um... You hit the nail on the head. Sheer fucking hubris.